Okay. Hi everyone. So this is construction geo class two, and uh, we'll look at some. So the plan for today is we'll first see uh, compass equivalence theorem. And we'll see a very cute problem on construction geo, which is Elmer 2020 P3. Uh, we'll complete the Steiner Ponsley theorem or Ponsley Steiner. Complete Ponsley Steiner. This is the basic plan, but we'll see if we get more time or like or how it goes. Okay. So compass equivalence theorem. So everyone knows what a compass is, right? You will all have used in like school construction things. It's like a tool which you like put the metal lib on a point and then a pencil is there and then you put it here and you draw a circle by like rotating that pencil thing that is a compass in that compass you can like change the radius right like you can change the radius and preserve the radius so let's say i draw a circle of five centimeter radius here now i can draw a uh, circle uh, from like with center this random thing o dash with same radius as this circle i can do that using the compass we use right but there's a thing which is called as a, uh, I forgot the name. It's like a uh, huh, collapsible compass. So what happens is you cannot preserve the radius in that. So the way this compass works is suppose you're given two points A and B, it will draw a circle with center A and radius uh, AB. But Let's say you are given this circle. It cannot do the following. Like you have to uh, transpose the circle with center this point. Like draw a circle with the same radius. You cannot do this directly. So this is what a collapsible compass is. So is it clear that what a collapsible compass is to everyone? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, other people like two people said yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what compass equivalence theorem says is collapsible compass is as good as a normal compass. This is what the theorem says. So what do we have to prove? Like, like what is this theorem trying to say? So if you're given a point A, point B and C, anywhere random, can you construct a circle with center A and radius this distance BC just using a collapsible compass? And uh, you can assume that you have a straight edge. Like there are two constructions. One using a straight edge also you can do it. And without using a straight edge also you can do it. Uh, we'll try to focus on this construction without using a straight edge because we'll assume we do not have other tools for now. Okay, so think about this for like four or five minutes and uh, if you have any ideas, you can tell. Also, uh, if you want to use straight edge for now, you can. It's fine. We'll see both construction anyway. So what you have to do is you have point A, point B, point C. And you have this circle. And you need to show using a collapsible compass, you can construct this dotted circle. Uh, this thing.
uh, the question is clear to everyone, right? Just to make sure. Like if anything is not clear, you can ask. Okay, does anyone have any idea? Like, it's fine even if you don't want to do it directly. Like, anything which you can do with a collapsible compass. Like, in most of the theorems which you did in the last class, there was the first step which was like almost common in everything. Like it's essentially a somewhat natural step to consider in a construction geo problem. Uh, okay, someone says midpoint. Uh, okay, midpoint is a fair guess. Mm. Uh, we'd be done if you could just make parallel lines, which is doable, I think. Okay, how do you make parallel lines? Uh, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Uh, so you are assuming that you have a straight edge for now? Yeah, I'm assuming you have a straight edge and we can construct parallel lines. Okay, that is an interesting idea. Uh, because we can just construct parallelogram in that case. and Yeah, I see how that would work. Okay, how do you construct parallel lines? Wait, we can construct midpoint of BC. Okay, how? Uh, draw a circle with center C and, di uh, and radius CB. And yes. the two intersections line. Yes, so we can construct midpoints. Yeah. This is assuming straight edge, right? Yeah, yeah, obviously. Like that's why the line D comes. Okay, so let's just do a construction using straight. Like as you have straight edge for now. Oh, parallel lines. <coughs> well, if we can construct midpoints, then we can construct parallel lines too, right? Oh, right, using Ponsler Steiner. Yeah, 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 sure. Or just like midpoint theorem or like yeah, yeah, the yeah, serious yeah. thing. Yeah, fine. Okay, yeah, that is a nice proof. Uh, so I'll just repeat the proof quickly. So uh, the idea is if we can construct parallel, like we want to translate this segment BC. Uh, where is that? So what we want to do is we want to translate this segment BC such that B goes to A and like C will go to something like parallel thing you draw here C dash. And then we can use our collapsible compass 
to with center A and this point C dial and get this orange circle. So if you can construct a parallelogram with three vertices A, B, C, we'll get the fourth vertex C dash and we'll be done. So we have to construct parallel lines. And we saw it in like constant standard or if you do not know, we'll sh show it again. We want to construct parallel lines, which we do using midpoints. And uh, midpoints construction is like this way. Like you basically draw the perpendicular bisector of BC. So you draw this circle and these two points lie on the perpendicular bisector. And since you have a straight edge, you can draw this line. And that way you'll get the midpoints. So you can construct midpoints of segment. And now how do you construct parallel? Let's say you have this. Uh, okay, yeah. Draw A, B, A, C. Would I call it? Uh, Okay, yeah, uh, one sec. So you have line GH and point I. And midpoint GH. The parallel line. Oh. But this was not supposed to be hard. Uh, you can just extend GI and take a random point there. Oh, fine. Yes. I was getting the line below it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so uh, you why it about this? Okay. So you take the line GI and take a random point K. Then you basically want this KH intersection this point L. Like you do not have L, but you want this. And IL HJ is a trapezium. So this point IH cap GL will lie on the line JK. So we just go like uh, in the opposite order and you take a random point K, you draw KJ because you have the midpoint and you draw IH and you get the point M. So now you take GM and you get the point L and you draw IL which is parallel. Yeah. And then you'll get the parallel lines. So you can construct a parallel of BC and then parallel of AB. And you get this point C dash. Okay, nice. Uh, now maybe try to do this without using a straight edge. Uh, we can also uh, find out the midpoint of segment AB. And yeah, then... we can find out the midpoint of any segment, right? Like BC was not special. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're saying another method? Uh, yes. Uh, like okay. uh, finding out the midpoint of AB and then drawing a parallel line through uh, point C to AB. Point C to AB. Okay, then. Then it will again form. Uh, now we can also draw the, a parallel line through A to B C. Now we, we can also form a parallelogram in this way, and then find a radius. Yeah, we did the same thing. Like we we need midpoints just to construct the parallel lines. Like it's fine wherever midpoint you construct. Like the idea is you can construct midpoint of two points, D and E. Right, and now if you can construct the midpoint. You can construct a line parallel to DE through any other point. So midpoint are not used directly as such. So like the, the idea is same. Then you construct parallel to BC through A and then parallel to AB through C and get the point C dash. Is it clear? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, how, uh, how do I motivate without compass construction now or without straight edge? Okay, try to think of symmetrically. Like you need compass, right? What does compass do? It draws circles. So 
what is the most natural thing about circle? It's symmetric about everything, right? So try to find some symmetric relation between this circle and this circle and these points, like something. If that makes sense, what I said. Mm -hmm. Also, is it clear that why we are trying to find symmetry? Like, why is it motivated? Like, that is the main part. Like, construction you can find after you are like, you feel the thing, you know? But like, getting motivated, like, how, why you think of symmetry is important. Also, maybe like symmetry is somewhat overcomplicating the thing. But I don't know a better way to motivate that. <clears throat> <laughs> I'll give another hint at like seven thirty in two minutes. Uh, we are trying to prove compass equivalence. It will take only like five minutes. So you can join in from like the next thing we'll do, Anurag. But I'll just type out the name if you want to check it out. Okay. So what is the most common type of symmetry you can say? Like, Malay, you took a class on it, you should know. Reflection? Yes. <laughs> so, uh, like, these two circles are of the same radius. So, they must be like reflection of over, of each other over some line, right? What line will it be? Mm -hmm. A perpendicular bisector of uh, AB? Yes. 
can we draw the perpendicular bisector? Like uh, drawing, like we only have a compass, we don't have a straight edge. So drawing a line just means getting two points on that line. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. How? Uh, draw a circle with radius uh, AB with yeah, center right. A. And... So we draw this circle, center mm -hmm. A with radius AB and center B with radius AB. So you get these two points. Like you have these two points on this line. You do not have the line. You just have the points D and D. Now, uh, this circle is reflection of, uh, like orange circle is reflection of red circle over this line. A is reflection of B over this line. So we have to basically reflect C over this line. And that will lie on this orange circle, right? How do you reflect a point over a line using just a compass? Uh, do not say that construction. Which the teacher school like you take C and then uh, draw an arc and then that thing. But that might also work actually. Yeah, you can take. Um... Yeah, you, yeah, it's fine even if you have to. Yeah, people would have done this construction in school, right? Like constructing the. Oh, that won't construct the reflection. That will just give you a point on the perpendicular from C, right? Wait, I'm not sure if you're talking about the same thing. Okay, but what I meant is that um, take circle with center E okay. and radius EC. Yes. And circle with center D and radius DC. Yes. Okay, wait, no, wait. I'm being dumb. Right? No, it's correct. No, yeah, yeah. In this, yeah. yeah. So just take the reflection. Yeah. Yeah, basically, you want to, con uh, like, these two points will, like, if you draw a reflection of C over ED, then EC will be equals to EF. So we draw yeah. a circle with center E and radius EC, similarly for D. And those two circles yeah. will interact at a point F, which will be the reflection of C. And that's yeah. how you get this point. Yeah. So is this clear to everyone? Like at yeah. least four or five people would should say yes, if it's clear. Could you please repeat? Okay, from which step? The circle from point E. Okay, so is it clear that we want the reflection of C over the line D E, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one second. I'll draw the line D E again. So, what are the okay? Let's say I have constructed the reflection. Uh, constructed the reflection of C over the line D E. Let's say F is C over D E. Then, what are the properties about F that I know? E F should be equals to E C, right? This should be true. Yes. And uh, DF should be equal to DC. So if I draw a circle with center E and radius EC, F should lie on that circle, right? Because EC equals EF. And radius is EC. Yeah. So, so F should lie on this circle also? Center D, radius DC? Because DC equals to DF. Like, yes. that's clear, right? Why? Like, if it's not, I'll just tell you. Okay. So, circle with center D and radius DC. Like, this thing is the radius. And DF equals to DC. So, this length is also equals to radius. So, this should lie on the circle by the definition of a circle, right? Yes, so, yes. F should be the intersection of these two circles. Like, this circle and this circle. So, that's how we get F. Is it is that clear? Yes, it is. Yeah, and so we are done. Okay. <clears throat> Does anyone have uh, any doubts? Also, kind of stop, please. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fall this way. Okay. Uh. <clears throat> Uh, what do I do next? Okay. Should I do the Elmo problem or should I finish Ponsley Steiner? What do people want? Okay. Uh, create a poll. Apparently, my Zoom is not updated, so I'm not able to create a poll. Like, okay, fine. People saying Elmo. <coughs> 
Uh, what did you do in last session about constant signers? Uh, we proved parallel lines. We proved we can get midpoints. We got perpendicular lines, uh, which will result in all the centers of the triangles, except in center, obviously. And uh, yeah, Elmo one is Janabel problem. Okay, so people are seeing bond slash title. Fine. Uh, okay, I'll just do the post test channel and I'll state what we had done earlier. Yes, Yana will, not Jana will. <laughs> okay, so post test channel, I'll just state the theorem again. Uh, one so, suppose you have a straight edge. So, straight edge is like a tool which will create an infinitely long line between two points. And a circle marked with a center. Like any random circle. Prove that you can do everything that you can with a straight edge. <laughs> and compass. So the stuff we proved in last class is like uh, you won't need to know the proofs of those things in this class. So I'll just state what you can do for now. And you can just assume that, okay, that we can do this. Thing. You can, uh, suppose you are given uh, two points A and B. You can construct their midpoint. And now we just saw that we can also construct parallel lines using this thing, right? You can also construct perpendicular lines. The idea is almost similar. Okay, it's not actually similar. You need to use the circle. Uh, so if you can construct parallel lines, midpoint perpendicular lines, do you people see that we can construct the circumcenter? Yes, no. Yeah. Also uh, perpendicular from any point, like in you know, including on this segment or outside this segment, right? Yes, any point, including yes. and out. Yes. Yes, we can construct circumcenter. Like, what do you need for a circumcenter of a triangle ABC? You construct the midpoint and you construct the perpendicular from that mid midpoint. And you do that for other two sides also, and you'll get the intersection circumcenter. You can do ortho center, which is directly by perpendiculars. You can do set. Did I just switch tabs? Wait. Which screen are you people seeing right now? Now me. Yeah, okay. Perpendicular bisectors. Yeah, we are drawing perpendicular bisectors, right? Like we can do midpoint and then perpendicular bisector. And we can also do centroid. So now, what do you need like uh, while doing any construction using a compass and a scale? Like the main thing you need is intersection of a circle with another circle is what you need or intersection of circle with a line. These two things are actually need, right? We don't need compass for anything else. And the way we define circle is given two points A, B. We define the circle A bracket B as circle with center A and radius A, B. So is this clear that if you prove that these two things are true, that we can do this with the straight edge and a circle with center, then we will be done with the proof of the theorem. Yeah. Okay. Other people. Like if at any point it's not clear, you can ask me. It's fine. I'll just explain it maybe in another way. Okay. I'll assume it's clear. 
So let's try to uh, get intersection of a circle with a line. So let's say this is the uh, circle we are given. <coughs> this black circle we are given and the center is four. And uh, we are given another circle, the construction. Uh, let's say this circle, AC. We are not given the circle explicitly. We are just given the two points. And we are told that the circle has enter A and radius AC. So do not have this circle thing, basically. And you have some random line, DE. We don't need the points to equal no? And we want to construct the intersect these two points. So, what was the main idea in Ponsley Steiner? Like whenever we were trying to do a group, <clears throat> we try to shift everything to the circle which we are given. And we do the stuff there and then we shift back. The shift is basically like basically uh you try to resize. Like let's say the circle is bigger in size than this black circle, right? So you try to make a similar figure here basically like it's a homo 30 for people those who know and otherwise you can say like if you let's say zoom out this picture then this will be like zoom out this part then this will be the same as this thing right so that's what a homo 30 is so that's what you try to do shift everything to this black thing do stuff there and shift back so okay how do you shift uh Okay, shift hmm. Okay, yeah. So how do you shift this circle to this black circle? On this circle, you only know the points A and C. So what would you try to do to shift this circle? Basically, find the center of similarity. Yes, Malay. Okay, so what we do is we are given segment AC. So like if we shift the circle to this circle, the point A should go to O. Okay, parallel line. Wait, Anurag, do you know the proof already for Ponsley Steiner? Uh, that doesn't answer the question, but okay. So the idea is like when we shift this circle to the black circle, the centers will collide and this point C uh, should lie on this line basically. And you take this intersection C dash. Like OC dash is less than the length AC, but that's fine. We are basically trying to construct a similar figure, not congruent. And these two things are governed by this point, basically. Okay, the point is not clear here. Like, if we basically uh, project this circle from this point F, like, okay, do you see the triangle FOC dash and FAC are similar? That's what we wanted, like. If that makes sense. That is how we're shifting the circle to this. Is this much clear? Yes. Okay. Now you also need to shift this line to this uh, circle. So, okay. So when we shift this line, what do we want to preserve? Like we can construct parallel lines, right? Like what if we just construct a parallel line here? Is that helpful? No, yeah. right? Huh? Oh, wait, can you repeat this? Like we now we we have shifted the circle to this thing. Now we want to transform this line to this circle, right? To get the intersections. Yeah. We can construct a parallel line, we know. But where do we construct the parallel line? Here or here? Like there cannot be multiple things, right? Everything yeah. will give a distinct intersection. So which one do you want? Like, 
let's say you you want everything to be proportional so if you construct like some like this thing is not that close to let's say the end of the circle right but what if i construct a parallel very near to this this is not like seemingly accurate right like you should be able to feel it that no this should not be the right thing so what thing should be the right thing we want something which is similar like the entire figure should be similar to yes. the circle too. yes so in some uh, okay i guess you can just okay wait we want point of intersection um like if somehow you are able to find that similar line we could yeah. just take a point of intersection and draw it with the x similar center yeah that and is fine but how yeah. do you transfer the line that is the main part after that it's fine yeah okay so the idea is you take a random point uh, g let's say so uh, if i construct a similar triangle to agc with centers o, with two points o and c dash that will be good right yeah yeah so how do we construct a similar triangle like uh, okay why do parallel I... lines yes we construct parallel to ag through o and through cg uh, through c dash parallel to cg and this point g dash should lie on the transformed line right <coughs> you can check that this thing should be collinear because of similarity oh, sorry with f is this clear to everyone why g dash is a point which will lie on the transformation of this line like okay malagruta c other people if it's not clear you can ask Okay. So now what we do is we construct a parallel line through this red line through G. And now this thing, the whole thing which was here is now transferred to this area, right? And we can, we have this circle. So we can take the two intersections and transport these two points back through F. Like H will go to this point, you can see here, and I will go to okay. I will go to this intersection. You can see these two things intersect. Is this clear to everyone? Okay, I assume that's a yes. So that is how we construct intersection of a circle with a line. Now we need intersection of two circles. <coughs> so uh, let's say I have this circle and this circle. And I need these two points, right? Like the line passing through these two points is the radical axis. So if I construct the radical axis of these two circles, let's say I consider the radical axis, then I know how to construct intersection of a line with a circle, right? And I can then construct these two intersections. Then I'll get the intersection of two circles. So basically, we have to construct radical axis of two circles. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. So how do you do radical axis? Uh, okay. It's not that direct. Like it's quite hard. Let's see. Oh, let's say you have the circle A, B, and C, D. Okay, I'll just like not, uh, I'll just give it away by like trying to motivate it. Uh, <clears throat> there is a, okay, since more, I don't, do not expect much people to know radical axis as of now. So I'll just try to finish this in five minutes and you can uh, skip the part if you do not radical access. Okay, 
So let's say you have to construct this radical axis and you have two points lying on the circle. You people know about the radical axis theorem, right? Like uh, let's say I take any point on this radical axis and I mark these intersections. Then these four points are cyclic, right? B, F, yeah. K, J. And what other thing you know? That radical axis is perpendicular to the uh, this thing. Line drawing the centers. So if you get one point on the radical axis, then you can draw perpendicular to get the radical axis. So you have to get one point. And that one point is like, if you draw this point uh, K and J, then these four points should be cyclic. You want to exploit this property to get that point. <coughs> Okay, I don't know how to motivate this, so I'll probably just say it and you can think why it works. The idea is you construct the midpoint of BF. Then you know that this circle, right? Uh, Wait a second. Yeah. So if you draw this circle, this red circle, then LF should be equals to LM, right? And CF equals to CM. So if basically uh, LC is the perpendicular bisector of the line FM. So uh, if I construct the perpendicular through uh, through F, perpendicular of CL through F, that will pass through a point on this radical axis, right? And will intersect the circle here. We do not know the point M. We just know that this is the perpendicular. And similarly, we can draw a perpendicular from here. These two perpendicular will meet at the radical axis. Uh, I kind of messed up the explanation. Like, is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it clear to other people who know radical axis? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, th this was a bit messed up. Sorry for that. But I don't know a better way to like motivate this. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any questions? I'll wait for a minute. Okay, fine. Let's now move to the easier part. We'll do another problem, which is completely irrelevant to what all we did before. And that will probably be like more intuitive for people who are new. Okay, uh, let me just insert the problem. Actually, not a problem. That is going to be <laughs> uh, You have a tool. What it does is, given two points A comma B, it will construct perpendicular bisector of A, A B. <coughs> Prove that <coughs> this tool can construct Ortho center, circum center, centroid of triangle ABC and is better than straight edge. For now, assume that <coughs> lines A, B, B, C, C, A are drawn. Uh, 
Okay. So this is the question. Uh, I'll give you five minutes to think, like whatever you want to try with this tool and whatever you can get. Uh, we'll start discussing this at like eight. Yeah. Like just try to play with this tool. Like anything random which you can construct. I'll go drink water in the meantime. If the question is not clear, you can ask. I'll explain it. Okay. Okay, uh, what all did you try? Like anything you can construct, it's fine. Like just say. <clears throat> hmm. 
I don't mean to flex, but I can construct this second center and this center. How? Yeah. Well, you draw the perpendicular bisector of BC and AB and AC. Okay, second center is obvious. Two. Yes. Uh, how do you centroid? Well, you draw perpendicular bisector and make it intersect the side, which is the midpoint. Okay, you get the midpoint, then? And then you just draw it with the opposite side. You do realize you do not have a straight edge. Oh, wait. Okay, yes. my bad. <clears throat> I think I can construct midpoint of BC. So, yeah. Okay. yeah. Should I tell? Oh, uh, midpoint. Wait, is midpoint area? I mean, you can construct midpoint if you have the segment mid BC, right? I, I don't need any segment. You can construct midpoint otherwise also? It's not a big sun, I can. Okay, tell how. I, I, I don't know of that. Uh, take, let AB be to any points. Hmm? You can draw perpendicular bisector. Hmm? Uh, mark any point on the perpendicular bisector. Okay. Uh, and drop up. Wait. Sorry, that was a fake sir. Yes. <laughs> oh no. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I assume segment in between. Uh, yeah. Sorry. No, no, sorry. Okay. So let's just start with what you are given. You are given A B as a line. So what else can you do? Uh, you can construct the pendulum bus sector of A B. And now you take the intersection. You get the midpoint, which is good. Now, what I do is I take perpendicular bisector of CB and I construct the midpoint D. So now I have two lines. Uh, like I have two points CD, I have the line CD, I have perpendicular through C and D. So can I do anything with C and D? Like, <clears throat> what is the most natural thing? Midpoints. We already have midpoints in this case. The second natural thing is reflection. So try to construct reflection of C over D. Forget about A, B for now. C and D have more things with them. Like they have perpendicular lines passing through them. Try to construct reflection of C over D. Just to make sure line C, D is marked, right? Yes. You want to construct this point. <laughs> okay, any ideas? If X is arbitrary point on the line perpendicular to CD through D. Uh, you know it. It's not you. Oh, actually, uh, don't. Oh, okay, go on then. Go on. Uh, then uh, we can construct midpoint of CX. Uh, okay, fine. We can construct midpoint of ED. AD? ED, ED. Okay, I've read X. Sorry. Yeah, XD now. Uh, how do you construct midpoint of XD? Uh, draw perpendicular bisector of XC and CD. Huh? That will be the midpoint of XD oh, okay. because it's right angle. Right, right, right. 
Okay, so we can construct midpoint of XD. Yeah. Yes, then. Okay, notice that uh, you also get this point E, right? Let's just say Y. And by uh, like homothety or similar triangles or midpoint theorem, whatever, X, Y, C dash should be collinear, right? Yeah. So if we somehow get the line X, Y, we can take its intersection with this line to get C dash. How do we do that? <clears throat> Like the only way to get lines for now is draw perpendicular bisectors. So we need two points such that the perpendicular bisector is XY. <coughs> okay, so if I draw perpendicular bisector of X and Y and I let them intersect this two hundred e and f then e x will be equals to e y because it uh, is the perpendicular bisector and uh, since these two lines are parallel you can also show e x will be equals to x f so this will be a rhombus so the perpendicular bisector of e f will be x y so that's how you get the line x y and then you will get the point c dash so is this clear that how you construct the reflections? Wait, yeah. no, you don't know why, right? Oh, you know, you know. Okay. What do you not know? Uh, sorry, man. Why is like a uh, perpendicular bisector of CX cap this thing? Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. So is this clear to everyone that how we can construct reflections? Okay. So now this was doable when we had a uh, perpendicular lines through C and D. But now I want to reflect A over B, but I don't have perpendicular lines through A and B, but I know I can construct many other perpendicular lines by constructing perpendicular bisectors repeatedly. So how do I construct reflection of A over B? Like I can construct this perpendicular line and I can construct this also. Like too many perpendicular lines I can construct, but how do I use them? They can construct more perpendiculars, but okay, let's just keep three for now. <coughs> Any ideas? <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> okay. So for now we have three perpendiculars. I know I can construct reflection of C over E by what we just did, but that will just be B. That is not helpful, right? Yeah. So, yeah, but I can also construct a reflection of D over E, right? That will probably be helpful. Let's see where that lies. So, like you can show this manually, right? Like, let's say this is X, X, X. This is 2X, so this must be 2X. So this is X. So now, <clears throat> I got uh, F. B is midpoint of EF. So I can construct perpendicular uh, bisector of E and F and that, sorry, I can have perpendicular bisector of E or F and that will just be uh, perpendicular through B. Now I can repeat this. I can construct reflection of C over B to get another point. And then I can construct reflection of F over E. Uh, x, 2x, 3x, 4x, x, 2x, 3x. And then I can also do uh, g over f, no. f over g. What am I doing? This thing, g over, uh, b over g. <coughs> At this point, h, this will be the reflection of uh, a over b. So is, is this clear that how do we get h? <coughs> Yeah. Another easier way to do this is like this is okay. <coughs> like you got perpendicular uh, to this line through B, right? Similarly, you got perpendicular through this line through A. And now you just have perpendicular through A and B, so you can construct reflection. So now what all we have is we can construct reflection of A over B. If line AB is drawn, <laughs> given line AB, we can draw perpendicular to AB <coughs> through A. So is this clear that we can do these two steps? So, uh, so now let's say you have a line to construct the ortho center. You need to construct perpendicular from C to AB, right? How do you do that? <laughs> like you want to construct this line. If you get this point D, that where this point D lies, then you can obviously construct the perpendicular to AB through D, right? So you just want to get D. <clears throat> and you already have midpoints. So now try to find a way to get D. <clears throat> we want to draw H or G. Uh, both, Anurag. But we are first trying to show ortho center. <laughs> okay, how do we draw G? Um, uh, if you can draw like the perpendicular bisector huh. of or to, you can draw a perpendicular bisector oh. uh, of triangle ABC. You can also draw the circumcircle of triangle. <laughs> you don't have a compass. Oh, okay. No what are the tools that you are given? Uh, you are given two points A and B. You can only construct perpendicular bisector of AB. And can we draw lines? No, you are not given a straight edge. Okay. <laughs> uh, you can draw the circumcircle then. Yeah, yeah, that is fine. Yeah. And then, like, uh, if we uh, manage to draw the 
whatever centroid or something then you can get the euler line right uh yeah but uh, drawing centroid is not easier like drawing ortho center is easier you need to yeah, you then, then, then getting the euler line will help us that we can use some kind of similarity and reach our touch i mean that is a lot harder you first see how do you construct euler line just using the pendulum bisectors oh yeah i see i see we can't draw lines right yeah 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 sorry <clears throat> yeah, well, that is correct. <clears throat> okay, so it's probably like harder to come up with it yourself. So basically, note that uh, the points F and G, like CF by CA, is in like ratio two, right? It's like half of it. So if we, and, uh, okay, that's probably a bad way to do it. Right? <clears throat> hmm. Okay, so you know point E and you want to get point D. If you get midpoint of DE, then you can reflect E over H to get D. <clears throat> that would work. But how do we get H? <laughs> okay uh like if you consider the midpoint of this thing ce like we're considering midpoint of de let's consider midpoint of ce also i <clears throat> this will lie on ft right because f and g are midpoints so by homo that d what can you say about IH? It is perpendicular to AB. Yes. Since CD is perpendicular to AB, like an IH is parallel to CD, it should be perpendicular to AB, which means it should be perpendicular to FG and it passes through midpoint of FG. So it should be the perpendicular bisector. So what we do is we construct the perpendicular bisector of FG <clears throat> intersected by H, take a reflection of E over H to get D. And then we can construct the perpendicular. So we'll get CD. So we can now construct perpendiculars. Is this clear how? And like, uh, like probably like motivation behind H, like if you can now see it. <clears throat> uh, is it clear how to construct perpendicular lines? <laughs> okay, I'll assume that it's clear. Okay, uh, now uh, Anurag wanted to construct centroid, right? But for that, we need uh, straight lines. So, can we construct a straight line? Like, <clears throat> let's say. I give you some point A and a point B. Can you construct the line? Okay, C. Can you construct line AC? Are we given a complementary line? Yeah, we are given this line. Yeah, okay. Uh-uh. <clears throat> 
Okay, so we can draw a line perpendicular to AC through C. Oh, we cannot. We do not have the line AC. Oh, we don't, but we can draw the perpendicular bisector of AC, right? Yeah, we can draw perpendicular bisector. Yeah, right. and then draw the perpendicular bisector of take, like take any other point on. Um, like we are, we are given some point at which this perpendicular bisector intersects that line. And then draw the... No, no, you do not know wait. that point. We can't intersect points. Like, you do not have this line, right? How will you intersect? Like Oh, no, not not this line, but this line and the complementary line, the perpendicular bisector and the uh, complementary okay. line. Yeah. Okay. Can we reflect A across this? Oh, yes. I guess we can. Yeah, then reflect A. Note that the perpendicular bisector, like now you, oh, wait, damn, shit. No, 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 I'm wrong. It's fine, you have this thing perpendicular. Wait, 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 I'm missing something. Uh... <coughs> wait, aren't you done though? Like you draw a line. Oh, wait, you can't draw lines. Yeah, you can't draw that line. <laughs> well, can you draw parallel lines? No. Yeah, we can. Okay, uh, so we have this perpendicular bisector, right? And <clears throat> this point D. So, like, uh, AC is perpendicular to this line. If we take any other point, let's say E, and suppose you have triangle AED, we know how to construct the perpendicular from A to e, DE, right? We just saw. So we just need, like we have AD, we have DE also. We just want AE segment. So we want to pick our point E such that we can construct segment AE. So what we do is we just take the perpendicular line or through A. And now we have this triangle AED where we have all the three sides. So you can construct perpendicular altitudes in this triangle, right? We can just construct the A altitude. That is the line AC. Is this clear? Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So basically we are we have to use what we just got. Like you can like motivate that way. Like whatever things you have you have, you have to use them somehow. Okay. <clears throat> so now we can construct the line AC if we are given this line. But let's say you are not given this line. Suppose you have two points A and B. How do oh, right. How do you draw the line AB? Okay, so now I can tell how we can draw this or the center in that uh, in that given configuration or whatever. Which configuration? Like you asked to draw an uh, ortho center in some problem, right? Which problem? Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, anyway, until then, yeah, let's try to find this. Okay, we know that if you have some line through A, we can construct the line AB, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so we just need to construct a line through A. How do we do that? We don't even need point B. If you just construct a line through A, we'll be done.
Uh, if we consider two points A and B, we yeah. can draw the perpendicular bisectors. Yes. Let's say you have two points A and B, you draw perpendicular bisector. Huh? Uh, we can take any arbitrary point, let's say point D. Or... Okay, point C. Yes. yes. Now uh, drop the perpendicular bisector of AC. Okay. Uh, we get another point. That's the intersection of the perpendicular bisectors. Now we have two points on a line. Now we can also draw a line through A. Uh, which line? Like we have two points. Now we can draw a line through A and B. I, I mean only understand. through one. Like we have C and D points, okay, but how do they help? <clears throat> I'm saying like, okay, what we saw earlier is if we have a line through A, like <coughs> what you have is, let's say you are given some line, random line, you have some point C. Then if you are given this line through A, we can construct uh, this line AC also, right? But yeah. I don't understand how having those two points help you. Okay, like the idea is somewhat fine. Like, okay, you take C and you have a line through C. So you can construct the line AC, right? Yes, that's what I was saying. Oh, okay. So yeah, now you have the line AC and you have a line through A. So now you can construct the line AB also. <coughs> so we get that. Huh? Yes, Malay? I just said yes. Yeah. So you can get straight lines. Now, what just the Anavil's tools does? <clears throat> it can do everything what a straight edge can do. And it can do better also. It can construct perpendicular bisectors also now. So Janavil's tool is superior to straight edge. And now, since we can construct straight lines, we can construct centroid also. <clears throat> so yeah, that was the problem. Does anyone have any doubts or any part that was not clear? <laughs> or any part of any construction we did in the class if that was not clear uh, that was the whole plan of the class and nice we were able to do everything okay so let's stop recording <clears throat>